All right, real happy to talk to the next gentleman on the sports card shop guest line. He has started a new company, which I we're going to talk about, which is very vital to the hobby uh, it, we all love. And I think it's something people need to know more about. I think sometimes people are intimidated uh, by things, but they don't know kind of the full uh, background or the story. And we're going to talk about that. He's also uh, a collector as well. But uh, uh, welcome, Dan Lorber of Stadium Insurance. Hey, good morning, John. Good to, good to talk to you today. Yeah, and we're, and we're definitely going to get into the insurance aspect of the hobby. I know sometimes, you know, we talk a little bit before we started uh, the show today. You know, I think sometimes people don't know all the ins and outs. They're intimidated. They don't know that it's not as difficult. I think they think it's more difficult getting, you know, insurance on, on your collection than it actually is. And we're going we're gonna to talk about that. But one thing I love with you is not only are you the, the owner of the company, but you're a collector yourself. So you, you're wearing both of those hats. I think there's something to be said when someone knows both sides of the table. I think the, the, you know, they're more apt to be friendly to both aspects, whether when it's just, hey, I don't know much about collecting, but here's a, the service uh, we offer. I think uh, there's a difference uh, in that. So I guess we'll start off there, kind of well, what you collect, kind of when it started for you, and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, John. So I've been collecting for about 30 years, 30, 35 years. Started out in cards, uh, grew up in the, the junk wax era, like everybody else collected, collected a ton of cards, and then uh, became an autograph chaser, collected autographs, and then moved into game use memorabilia. So I collect a lot of game use memorabilia, tickets, type one photos, kind of run the whole gamut. Um, I'm here on the West Coast. I'm a big uh, San Francisco Giants fan. San Francisco 49er fan. So, you know, collecting is, is a passion of mine and uh, just, you know, really into the hobby and you know, go to the national and all the major shows. So really, really love collecting. And yeah, you mentioned tickets. Tickets is something I've started to, to dabble in. I, I, I don't want to make this show all about tickets, but <laughs> tickets to me is really sort of an unvalued, uh, undervalued, uh, uh, niche. I, I think when you think about tickets, there's a lot less when we think about tickets versus cards. Tickets really were, especially uh, back in the day, were just really viewed as vessels to get into the stadium, the arena, the field to watch the game. They just get crumpled up in a pocket a lot of times, uh, tossed out uh, as someone was leaving the game after after the game was over, or you get home, you empty your pockets. Oh, the ticket, I throw it out. I've already attended the game. And so many of them don't, a small percentage survive. And then we can, you know, conditions a whole nother uh, episode, right? And so right. I try to pick them up. I think more people are kind of the light bulbs are going on and, and, and putting the same synopsis I have together. Like, hey, these are, these are in a way rarer than cards because they weren't viewed as collectibles at the time where they are obviously more so now. And so many didn't survive. Many are in landfills. Many are in bad shape, even if they did survive, because they were kind of crumpled up, thrown in maybe a, a box to be forgotten about. And then, you know, so I, I love the ticket aspect. They did a whole episode uh, on that. And you're seeing even people that their, their collection really is tickets. They're not even so much into the cards, but they collect tickets. And, uh, uh, you go like you mentioned the national. You go to the national, and you can see a few people set up, and their their inventory is just graded tickets, or or even raw tickets, or or a combination of the two. So I think that's a market that's that's growing literally uh, as we speak. You know, type one photos and another one that's exploded uh, on especially on the auction uh, side, and and you know just as well as I ha uh, know, Dan. The values of some of these, especially the the rarer or more demand uh, ones, you know, are, are set auction records in in many cases. So, you know, it, I, you know, when we think about our collections, right? Whether you're collecting for the financial aspect or not, right? There's incentive value just kind of built in, uh, especially if you've collected for any length of time. Uh, not that time's the only reason, but 
um, a little more. Uh, and I think when, you know, we're going to get into talking with stadium, you come from insurance background. But I, I, I think people think it's a lot more difficult than it actually yeah. is. So kind of talk about your your insurance background and the idea to launch uh, a stadium and, and why and all that good stuff. Yeah, so I've been in the insurance industry for about 30 years. I was an insurance agent for about 15 years. And then I was an insurance broker and I worked in the high net worth space with professional athletes and entertainers, uh, which was a lot of fun. And then um, as I have amassed this huge collection and I've dealt with other collectors in this space, I realized there wasn't, uh, there, there was a misunderstanding that insurance, you know, that these collectibles were covered under your homeowner's insurance. And there was really a gap there. Uh, for one, a lot of homeowner, homeowners insurance policies have what we call a sublimit, where it may only be $500 to $1,000 of coverage. Um, there's a deductible, a high deductible typically involved. And the bottom line is you don't want to put a claim in on your homeowner's insurance. It affects the premium for one. And if you file a claim, it could affect the renewability of your homeowner's insurance. So what we did is we built a affordable and simple to use product that was designed for the modern day collector. Um, basically, you can you could go to our website or download our mobile app. You put in what the value of your collection is. And then uh, we identify high value items, which are items that exceed 10% of your total coverage limit. And with those particular items that are identified as high value items, we ask that you simply download the mobile app, take a picture of the front and back of those items and any authentication, and we'll catalog those in the mobile app. And this way, if there's a loss, there's no, uh, there's no gray area. We know exactly what you had. It's cataloged in the mobile app. Um, for the items that aren't high value, we just ask that you either keep photos on your phone or a video or a spreadsheet. We just made the process extremely simple and, um, you know, you could choose deductibles starting at zero, 500 or a thousand, depending on what your budget is, but it's really designed to protect the collectors and make sure you have that coverage for your collection. Because as you said, you know, whether we're doing this for financial reasons or we're just collecting, uh, the truth is, is that these things do have substantial value. And if something was to happen, you know, you want to be compensated where, you know, the, the hurt isn't as bad, you know, if something was to happen and you can actually go out and, and repurchase these items that you own. Yeah. And, and, and in some cases, Dan, you know, some of these will be hard to reacquire. And if you're going to lose that, I, you know, whatever it be, whether it be fire or theft or, or some other way, right. If you can't replace them, you at least want to be sort of financially, uh, recovered. Um, it's still going to be sad if you can't replace the actual item, but at least you'll be double sad, right? Not only did you lose your item, but I had no insurance. And so I'm out the item and I'm financially right. have recouped nothing uh, on top of that. That's a, a, a double whammy. A, a, an aspect you mentioned, I want to kind of piggyback off for two uh, with, with homeowners insurance, right? I do have a collectibles policy now full of transparency it's not with stadium uh so i'm not shilling not with stadium yet let me use the word yet okay i won't mention who it's with um i might have mentioned it in the past but i won't mention it on this episode but let's go back like with homeowners like your your farmers or all state or or right. you know that, that cover your home these companies are not you know familiar uh, on a on a real specific level with the sports card or memorabilia, so you can you can add a rider, but it's not the same as going with a collectibles insurance where that's where it's geared towards, right? You yeah. know, car insurance is is geared to matters pertaining to cars uh, and accidents and 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 you know liability and that sort of thing. Your homeowner's policy and that. Now I used to have it uh, as a writer on my homeowner's policy uh, that those days are gone, but I never had to file a claim, but I've heard stories from other people who have, have tried to file a claim through their homeowners towards uh, cards. And it's just a nightmare of red tape and them trying to explain 
what was lost and and the person on the other end of that conversation doesn't understand that and in their defense we really can't expect them to they're they're in, you know an insurance agent dealing with house issues and furnaces and water heaters and you know fire and and you know things like that burglary but not specifically with cars so they're someone's telling them you know my mickey mantle rookie got stolen and they're like you know they have no clue where to start and where to begin and a lot of times you hear these these mainstream uh insurance companies really try to fight paying it or not wanting to give really what what the value is or they don't even know where to start how do we know you know a lot of times they'll look up a cop or something it's from you know 10 years ago and they're right. saying hey here's here's all we could and that cop may be significantly more so there's a you know homeowners i always tell people when when it gets asked to me dan is i guess it's better than nothing but it's if if, if you have a collection of any kind of ill you're better off having from a, a collectibles insurance such as a stadium because you you know you're in that space you know you know where to go you know how the process works um where you know a homeowner's policy they they don't have you know the, the, it's not geared really uh for that and and, and that's in their defense right? right and so there's going to be a lot of gray air more gray area going that route than what stadium i mean would would you agree yeah so the last thing you want to do is if there's a loss and, and you know something happens you're upset as it is the last thing you want to do is be arguing o over the value of items <laughs> and so a lot of these insurance companies they don't know the difference between a psa 7 and a psa 10 or or a game used item versus a game issued item or whether it's photo matched or not photo matched this is run by collectors and owned by collectors. So we understand the market. Um, so if there's a loss, you know, we want to pay you what you're entitled to, what the actual cash value of that item is at the time of the loss. And as we know in this industry, these prices fluctuate. So if there's a loss, we will pay what that item is worth at the time of the loss. So if it's fluctuated or if it's decreased in value, um, with all the tools we have at our, um, it, we have access to nowadays, whether it's you know card ladder or, or other other instruments in the industry, uh, we're able to come up with comps. Just like when we're purchasing items, we use comps, and when when we're buying items in the space, so uh, we keep that conversation fluid, and we know these prices change quite a bit. But the product does pay based on actual cash value, what the item is worth at the time of the loss. Yeah, and that's a great point. And I've heard people say, well, you know, I paid five thousand dollars for it. And, you know, when whatever incident happened, you know, it was twenty five hundred, but I paid five thousand. Well, that's the chance you take, right? It's like buying yeah. stocks, right? Sometimes you buy a stock and it, it, you know, you buy Apple early, you're you're smiling as long as you didn't sell too soon, right? right? Um, you buy another stock and it doesn't do as well. That's the that's the risk and, and chance you, you take. And I've heard people kind of nitpick about that. And that's a double edged sword. It works the other way, right? Maybe you bought it for fifty bucks and it's worth a thousand. You're gonna right. get a thousand now. You know, an exactly. insurance company's not you're not gonna say, Hey, you we're only gonna pay you fifty because that's what you paid. You don't actually really necessarily you don't know that because you're you're only dealing with what the at the time of, of what the market price is so i don't have any like I, I that's the way to me that's the way it really should be but i've heard i've heard others say well well that's you know you're gonna get what it's worth like you, you right. know, if you're selling your you know when you're selling your car right as a blue book value you can't say well i bought it you know three years ago for 10 grand and now it's only worth 3500 i really like to get 10 grand you can say that but you're not gonna sell it right and so uh, it makes sense and it's 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 best for both parties and it just that's that's the way it needs to be but and, and again that can work in your favor as well if you made some really smart uh purchases and so uh anyone that complains about that i tend to think they made some bad decisions they're just <laughs> they're probably more mad at themselves realistically um and they're just venting um <laughs> outwardly you know 
you you mentioned the ease of it, right? I think people think, I mean, I got to write down every card, whether it's like one dollar or fifty cents to you know four digits or higher. And it's obviously, I know this, but I, I think other people who haven't got insurance yet or or thinking about it, right? It's on their mind. I don't think they realize that it's really not that difficult for someone who doesn't have insurance yet. You know, some tips as as they head that direction. You mentioned like, hey, just catalog your collection with a video. That's you know, you can set up a tripod, a tripod, have your hands free, get out a shoe box, monster box, a graded card case, kind of thumb through that, get that on video. That is not as difficult. Uh, I I do that. You know, I'm a bulk seller through SGC. Everything I send to SGC each month. I video catalog. God forbid, you know, I, you know, knock on glass, I haven't had anything occur. But, you know, if it was to, at least I have a video uh, of what was sent and, and much like your own personal collection, right? And once you do that, too, I think it's easy, too, Dan. Anything new you acquire, um, you can just kind of take pictures, especially of significance, and sort of have them on file. I have a... a a one T terabyte flash drive that I actually have pictures fronts and backs of my, all my significant cards and it's on my keychain, So it's actually not in the house. I don't know what you think about this, but like if I had to leave the house quick, a fire, God forbid, you know, whatever, uh, you know, meteorite hits uh, close to the, and I got to exit. I actually have those on my flash drive on my keychain, leaving. It's not in the house being destroyed with everything else. And that's me. That's just something I, I don't know if someone told me that I just did that, but some tips, I guess, for, for those that are, are heading down the direction of getting collectibles insurance to make that process uh, easier for them and, and yourself as well. Yeah, no, and I mean, it's, there's, as a collector, we pretty much know what we have, you know, like someone says, Hey, do you have a, uh, you know, a 1987 Fleerberry Bonds card. I know I have it. So we all pretty much know, but it, if there's a loss, we just want to make sure that, you know, you're able to um, remember exactly what you had. I know it, it would be difficult at that time. So we're just trying to simplify that for you. Um, we only ask that you catalog in our mobile app, those high value items where you take a picture of the front and back through our, our mobile app. And this way, if there's a loss, you know, settling a claim is, is quick accurate and efficient but anything that's not a high value item it's good to have some kind of record somewhere of what you own and whether it's photos a video a spreadsheet just to refresh your memory so when you do talk to that claims adjuster um, you can lay out exactly what you have and and you, and you brought up a good point you said you're a submitter to a sgc or psa a, a bulk submitter a lot of people ask us, does our policy cover shipping and transit? And our policy does. There is a shipping limit. It's 10% of whatever coverage limit you choose. So if you chose a $100,000 policy, you would have $10,000 of coverage per shipment. That level changes based on the coverage limit that you choose. But we will cover those items while being shipped it, shipped to either a buyer, for example, if you sell something on eBay and you ship it to a buyer, as long as you send it with tracking and signature confirmation, there would be coverage if it was stolen or it was damaged while it was being shipped. It, we also cover if you ship it into an authenticator or an auction house, and we'll cover it while it's shipped to, whether it's PSA, SGC, while it's in their care custody and control, and while they ship that back to you, it's covered through the process. So that way you have the peace of mind and you don't have to sit on your computer and refresh that tracking number every two seconds to make sure it got there okay. But typically the homeowner's policy does not cover shipping in transit. So that's one thing uh, why you should buy a, a specific policy that deals with the collectible space. Yeah, that's a great point because that, like you said, the homeowner's policy, if that's something you got or you're thinking about going that route, they're only covering what's in the house uh at that time and again they're they're going they're not this is not the space they're they're familiar with so they you know they could give you 
grief about it. Like, how do we know? Or where's your proof? You know, where a lot of times I've heard, uh, I had a, uh, an acquaintance of mine try to file a claim through his homeowners and they wanted a receipt of the purchase. And, you know, he bought it 10 years ago, maybe even right. further back. And so to, he didn't have it. And so he was, he was really, there was a lot of friction there to try to get something covered. I, I actually don't know. He, I'm not, he wasn't a close friend. I don't know what the end result, but the conversation I had at that time was like, they really don't want to cover it, uh, you know, Chad. And so I don't have a receipt. They're saying they can't cover it without that. They don't know that I really have that. I could be, they're trying to say I could be saying I have that yeah. card and I don't. So there's a lot of push and pull there. Like you said, if you're shipping or receiving any cards of significance, um, all the more reason to have a, a collector's or, or dealer's policy, uh, you know, from, from a stadium uh, insurance because it's it's geared to that. And, you know, someone said, well, you know, John, I, I, whenever I ship, I always go to the U, you know, USPS, the Postal Service, I tell them the insurance value. I don't, you know, and that's great. It's better than sending something un, uninsured. But much like a homeowner's policy, the post office is not familiar with, you know, like you said, uh, 51 mantle PSA 7 or 51 mantle PSA 4. It's all sort of Greek to them. They're, who knows where they're going to go to even look up what the value is. They can say, well, you insured it for... 10,000, and I'm just making up round numbers yeah. here. The, we looked at, uh, when we did our research, we're only going to give you 3,000 for it, uh, the way we figure it. So, you know, they're not familiar, like you said, with all the analytical tools here, your card ladder and, and others. And uh, so, um, you know, that's the difference uh, as, as well. And, uh, you know, you say PSA to some people who are not in. In the card space, they're gonna they, they're thinking public service announcement, right? They're not thinking professional sports card authenticator, and so that's that's the difference between dealing and and going with someone who's in the space uh, and not. It's just gonna be a lot less uh, headache. Um, you know, I have a lot of cards for, for uh, when I signed up to to get collector's insurance. It was not. It wasn't as daunting as in, initially I thought it might be a little more tricky, and, and it and it wasn't. So I think some people are a little bit intimidated by the process. Do you think? I mean, do you think that's the number one reason? Maybe people who should have insurance on their on their in, uh, collection don't. You think it's that that's the, the main reason, or or others? Yeah, I think Something people. Else. Yeah, I think there's a fear. Of, a lot of people say, well, you know, I'm always constantly buying, selling, or trading cards. I never have a set inventory of what I own. But the nice thing is with our mobile app, you can we empower the consumer to add, remove, um, change items on their policy at any point. It's very interactive. You don't have to call into an agent and say and fax in proof that you own a card. You can basically just download the app, go in, and, and you have just like listing somebody something on eBay or Instagram or Facebook. You can add or remove items as you build your collection. So we keep it very simple, and like we say, we only need you to catalog the high value items, not everything that you own. Um, and then the, the other uh, misconception is that it's expensive. I mean, our basic policy for twenty five thousand of coverage is about $15 a month, which is which is nothing. If you ship a couple of items a year, you almost pay, it almost pays the cost of the policy. So the misconception is the cost and how difficult it is to obtain. And we kind of address those issues to make that as simple as possible for you. Anybody could go to our website. It literally takes you three, four minutes to get a quote and uh, give you an idea of the cost and our policies start at twenty five thousand of coverage and we can go all the way up to five million so you know these collections you know there's you know, people have you know very small collections or people who spend you know several hundreds of thousands on these items so we kind of can meet the needs of any any collector out there yeah and you mentioned fifteen dollars a month i you, i ship i ship one package that cost me more than that 
right. uh, and, and shipping, right? And it's that peace of mind. You're also dealing with a company that is just very, very familiar with the landscape, the terrain, and the space rather than in, a, in the homeowner's policy case and in the post office case. Uh, you make a great point about shipping and receiving being covered too with signature confirmation. It's funny being a bulk suburb for SGC, some of the folks when they're at my table at a show, you know, turning in their submission, they may not be local to the show. And they're like, John, you know, um, can you ship this to me if I pay for shipping? And the answer obviously is yes, but I always tell them in that same conversation is I can ship it to you. Just know that it's going to be shipped via signature confirmation. So you either have to be home to sign for it or you'll get that notice in your mailbox that you have a package at your local post office and you need to sign for it and come come pick it up. So long as you're comfortable under those terms, I, I can ship it to you. And, you know, I had someone ask me, why do I got to, you know, they didn't, I don't know whether they were asking for the same, like, why do I have to sign for them? Like, you want it, you want your cards to be covered. God forbid some, you know, worst case scenario, that's a requirement of insur insurance. And, and, and it makes sense, right? It's just, it, it's, it's part of the tracking, the provenance, where, where it was lost in, in the chain of command and, and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, I think it's a very important, and that's it's you know that's a, a great point we mentioned earlier with with homeowners versus real collectibles insurance, like stadium insurance is. It covers stuff you're receiving and shipping, as long as it's sent under those uh, parameters. Where homeowners isn't, you know, you tell you tell you know State Farm I sent uh, a two thousand dollar card and it didn't arrive, then be like okay. Well, what else can we help you with today? Right. We don't know anything about that. Like, you know, so um, that's that's the difference. And like you said, it's not as daunting. You can take a video. You know, I don't care how expensive your collection is, right? You, you chances are, if you're if you're if your collection's expensive, you've probably already cataloged it anyway, right. just for your own just for your own personal satisfaction. So. You just like you said, you, you you go to the app, you upload those those photos that you probably already have. You don't even have to take them. And uh, you can correct me if if I'm wrong. Like right now, you guys are the only one with an app that I'm aware of. And how cool how cool correct. is that and convenient, right? Correct. Yeah. No, it's great. It, like I said, it's all about being simple and easy to use. The other thing I want to make clear is it's not. I mean, our product just doesn't cover shipping. The other big thing is, you know. We see people walking around the shows with these Pelican cases and these Zion cases, and they have their whole net worth sitting inside these cases. These, these items you own, don't we don't just cover it in your house. So if, if you're at a show and you're carrying your Pelican case and you, know, you have a significant amount of money or value in these cars that you're carrying around with you, you really need to have it insured. You put that case down for one minute and people know what you have in there. You know, strange things happen. And the other thing is, you know, we went to went to the national and we see the people walking around with these cases with a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars in cards in them. And they'll go put that case in their room and they'll go out to dinner that night. I mean, it, it's absolutely nuts. So there is a lot of risk in this. And, uh, you know, we hate to believe that anything like that could happen. But, you know, if you're protected, at least you have that peace of mind that if something was to happen, um, that you would be compensated and you can go out and, and repurchase those items that, that were stolen, for example. So it's important, it's important product to have. I mean, you ensure your, your, your wife's engagement ring, or you ensure your car, you ensure, uh, you know, like I said, jewelry watches. Um, it's the same concept. These things are holders of significant value. And uh, if anything, these are at risk more than those other items. So uh, it, it's good to have something in place. Yeah, with, with the explosion of the hobby during COVID, Dan, as, as you well know, you you were, you were, it made the mainstream right. The, the hobby was on regular news reports, financial uh, news networks were, were covering what some of these cards were going for, record-setting auctions. It was bringing more eyes into the space, and and you know, unfortunately, we sometimes we don't like to talk about this, right? But anytime 
any, and this isn't relegated to, to the hobby, any hobby, any kind of industry or business, anytime there's value or money involved, there's people of, of ill rebuke that will try to cash in uh, and take advantage of that. So whether that's stealing something from a dealer's showcase at a show, whether it be national or regional or local show, or like you said, you put your, your Pelican case down for a second, uh, you, 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 you know, you have a, a lapse of, of knowledge and someone grabs it, kind of walks away, gets lost in the crowd. You look down and it's, where is it? Like, and, and now you now the panic sets in, right? And it's nice to know that you, you have covered, you know, it's one thing to, to lose an item that means so much to you. And then if you're not, if you're not insured, not only it's a double whammy, right? You not only have you lost the item, but you're getting no financial uh, compensation uh, for the loss. And, and so if you want to get it again, you're, you're basically buying it twice uh, out of pocket. And uh, and in some cases, right, we, we talked about this uh, before. In some cases, it might be an item that you really can't replace. And so if you can't replace it, uh, in the very least, you'd, it'd be nice to get some compensation so it's not a, a, a double bad day, right? It's uh, still a bad day because the item's gone, but at least you have some sort of compensation where, uh, again, it's it's it could be a lot worse. And, and I, I guess my question, as a dealer who sets up at shows, um, and, and you hope, you know, I've been fortunate that uh, I've had some minor things uh, taken, not even worth, like, filing a claim over, but if to a dealer, if they have a card of significance that somehow gets taken from a case, what is the requirement insurance wise? Do they need a police report just for a dealer who might be listening? Uh, yes. So they're kind of aware. Like, what's that process? Uh, yes. Entail? Yeah. So, if it, for example, if it's a high value item, you file the claim right through our mobile app. If it's a theft claim, we do file a police report. Because as an insurance company, we do investigate fraud. And, and if that card re, uh, you know, reappears later and someone else has it, then the fact that there's a police report, we can go and confiscate that card. Because we once we pay you for it, we actually own that particular item. So essentially, we bought it from you when we pay you for that loss. But uh, we do require a police report if there is a theft claim. Because again, it, it does cut down on the fraud aspect. And it just makes it makes us aware that that item could recir recirculate later in the hobby. Um, but for fire, fire, water damage, smoke damage, I mean, that's we don't require a police report for those items. Obviously, it's just theft that we require a police report. And then once that claim submitted uh, within 24 hours, one of our claims adjusters will reach out and they'll start the process with. Uh, getting the comps for that item, and then we get you compensated as soon as possible. Yeah, it makes all the sense in the world. And and thankfully, I've never have to do, I've never had to do it myself, uh, Dan. But I've seen fellow dealers have something of significance walk off from a case, and you you call the police. They'll come to the show. Uh, you know, take yeah. uh, ask you what happened. Uh, again, they're not. Unless they're collected themselves, they probably won't know, but yeah. at least they'll file the report, right, and do what they do, and now you have that that necessary paperwork to file uh, file your claim. It's not difficult, uh, you know. Police are to protect and serve. They will come to the show. They will be let in, uh, directed uh, where they need to go, make that uh, report out, talk to you. Now you have the the what the requirement needed to file a claim again no one wants that to happen right but it's nice to know it's not rocket science to if and when that day comes to uh that's how the process uh, uh works i've seen it it doesn't matter what's the national i know certain securities have more you're seeing more security right i know some shows have like cameras all over every angle which obviously helps and, and you mentioned a great point with these with grading and a lot of these serial number cards and the grading card themselves having a serial number on it, it makes it easier to track if a lot long as it's not cracked out of that case. It's easier to track that, that this card is stolen and now it's appearing on somebody's 
uh, for sale feed, whether it be eBay or I've even heard, we've all heard instances where someone's stolen the card and went to another show and, and the word was out there and they kind of matched up the numbers and like apprehended a suspect in, in that fashion. So, um, you know, it's, it's, I think it's, it's harder uh, maybe to, to steal certain cards, but uh, you still got to do the, you know, you still got to file the paperwork and do it the, uh, above board. And it's a great point. Like, you know, you, when you, when you reimburse someone for a loss that you're taking on that loss. So that card, you, you do own that card. That's, you know, people, I don't think people often realize that. So now they can take that money and purchase the same card and then that's yeah. their card, but you're, yeah. you're covering the loss. If that card services and a suspect's apprehended, uh, you know, you take possession of that card. Speak to that process. So let's say the card is recovered. You know, what, what happens from there? Yeah. So there's a couple of things. One thing I want to bring up is you can file a police report online. The police don't have to come out to the show necessarily or, or to your house or wherever. A lot of times we just, you just file the police report online and that it's a very simple process. Um, so it's it's not a, a big time consuming or a big see event. there's something even I didn't know that so I just I just learned something right there Jeff go but go ahead right. but so what happens is we compensate you for the card we pay you the actual cash value of the card if there's a loss uh, if that card resurfaces again we we own we own that card um, but the idea of the whole thing is to put you back to the way you were prior to the loss where you would get a check and you can go out and buy that that same card if it's available on the market and the the amount we pay you is enough money for you to go out and buy that card at that time so that process is very simple very easy for us to do very easy for the consumer to navigate like i said it's just a matter of filing a claim filing an online police report submitting those through our mobile app live person gives you a call within 24 hours we work together to come up with a comp on that item exactly what you had and then we issue a check to you for that item yeah again uh, the reason i'm asking this is i i don't think people realize that it's it's i think it's scary and it, it doesn't have to be and like i said i just learned that you can do a police report yeah. and i always i always was under the assumption when the incident happens, you got to get on the phone, get someone there, get the paperwork. But, you know, it makes sense now because there are, even with a car accident, if, like, the damage is minimal, you can just exchange information. And I've heard people, like, call the police and they're like, if the damage is not bad, exchange information. And through the phone, they've documented that a call uh, came in and that you did your you did what you were supposed to do. So uh, now it kind of sort of makes sense. But uh, I always thought with, with a theft or, you know, you had to uh, call, always have them come on site. But so I learned something there, which is which is uh, pretty cool. You know, we've seen the rise of memorabilia uh, of recent years. It's always been a popular thing to collect. You collect it yourself with, with, with game you stuff, bats. For those that want to ensure, like uh, outside the sports cards realm, uh, obviously we have grading in sports cards, but with like, a, let's say a, a signed bat or a game used uniform or, 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 or a combination game used sign, what is the requirements for the owner of those type of items to be uh, covered? Yeah. So again, if it's a high value item through the mobile app, you just take a picture of the front and back of that item. And then any authentication, whether it's a receipt from an auction house or it's a letter from, you know, there's companies out there, Mirrors, PSA, there's several in the game use space that authenticate items. We just ask for uh, whether it's an authentication letter that you get from those companies or a receipt for the purchase from the major auction house, whether it's Golden, Heritage, um, you know, Leland's, Gray Flannel, any of those auction houses, you just take a picture of the front and back and that receipt or authentication and we catalog it in the mobile app. It, it's very simple. Um, if it's not a high value item, again, you just keep, uh, whether it's photos on your phone, a video or a spreadsheet of what you had. Um, it, it, it's really user friendly, this, this product. So, um, and whether it's a type one photo or a ticket, it's the same process. 
There you go. And and a great point you made earlier, too. If you're a person who travels to a lot of show that brings your inventory on the road with you, you know, you made you made a point that like you, you may not, you know, that thing may be handcuffed to you. That case might be handcuffed to, to you at the show. You get back to your room, you leave it there, you go to dinner, you're not taking it. To, most people aren't taking their Zion case to dinner and putting it under the table, right? You're you yeah. assume your hotel room is safe. You put it, uh, you leave it in your room, even if you hide it or don't leave it out. But things can happen, right? There's people coming into the room. Um, you know, you just don't know. And and uh, you know, if so if you're someone that goes to a lot of shows or travels, um, you, you know, something to think about as well to have coverage that way you're you know, you don't have a, a, a sad story that doesn't have some sort of happy ending. Uh, and uh, it, it's, again, it's it's the ease of it. I don't think people realize. I think that's one of the reasons people are hesitant. That's I wanted to have you on today to kind of to go over those things. Because while I know some, I don't, you know, even me before I had it, uh, I my perception was not what, what reality was. And so I wanted to bring some reality to, to other people who may not have it, uh, who are thinking about it or on the fence and realize like, this is not that uh, difficult and uh, it's important, right? Uh, with, with some of the values of our collections, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like insurance, right? The old insurance adage, right? Um, you, you, you know, you don't want to use it, right? But you, you really do need it. Uh, and you hope you never use it. It's that peace of mind that you get that, you know, God forbid, uh, I have I have coverage if 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 a bad day occurs and uh, you know some people say well I'll take my chances right it just it just takes one bad day taking your chances you know you hear people say man I wish I would have did this or you know hindsight being uh, 2020 I don't want to be uh, one of those uh, guys so and again you said like you said it's very affordable you're the only one with an app which is really cool um uh you know and uh so again you know i'm sure anyone has questions they can reach out to you as well much like you answered them uh here uh dan i appreciate you making some time i know you're really busy um give out take as much time as you need give out uh your website your social media where people can find out more or just uh get coverage uh period yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on today. And it's great just to share, you know, what our product is. Um, you can get a quote very, and like I said, a matter of minutes by visiting uh, stadiuminsurance.com. So again, you can go to stadiuminsurance.com. We're in the app store as well under Stadium Insurance. You can download the mobile app and get a quote that way as well. Whatever's easiest for you. We do, we are on Instagram, uh, Stadium Insurance on Instagram. Um, we have a Facebook, you know, stadium insurance on facebook uh so there's several avenues where you could uh, get information on our company but the best thing to do is just visit that website and you know no obligation three to four minutes get a quote see if it fits in your budget and uh, you're welcome to message us right through the uh, website or you feel free to email me it can be reached at dan.lorber at stadiuminsurance.com i'll be sure to answer all your questions and reply right away just to make sure you, you fully understand what our product is, what it covers, and uh, the best way to get the best coverage for your collection. Yeah, and it, again, you know, it's it's for me, it's a no-brainer, uh, you know, and I'm sure for many others, but there's probably people that should have it that are just a little intimidated by the process, but you don't have to be, and uh, that's, you know, that was kind of the, the crux of, of this episode. Did I hear you? Are you... I, do you have a presence at the show? Did I hear that right uh, early, earlier? We've been doing a lot of shows on the West Coast. So we, yeah. we, did, the, we did the Burbank show. We've done some shows in San Francisco. Uh, as we expand right now, we're live in 14 states. We'll be in all 50 states by the end of the year. Um, but if you're, no matter what state you're in, you can go in and get a quote. And then that will help prioritize what states we're in live in if we're not already in your state. But um, yeah, you'll start seeing us at shows, uh, but feel free to reach out to me. Any questions come up, you know, we're happy to answer questions for, for any collectors out there. Like I said, I'm a longtime collector myself 
And we've all heard the horror stories. There's not one person that hasn't heard a horror story of things being stolen or there's a fire and you know how they had this amazing collection and now they're starting over. It, it's just sad to hear that. And, uh, you know, you ship things out to each other, you ship things into PSA, you ship things into SGC, you know, you hate for some somebody at the post office to see that label with that address and get tempted by by items that are that are in the mail. So just peace of mind for all collectors out there. Yeah, it's a great point, too. I, You know, one thing I do, Dan, as a tip, like anything I ship doesn't say sports cards on it. Like I don't <laughs> in my the name. Right. I uh, like. If you if someone can tell, they can tell, but I'm just not going to right. uh, advertise it. I always thought it'd be interesting if the grading companies themselves use. I think you know, there's collectors that work at the post office. If they see a box that says SGC or PSA, they they know what's in it. They're probably great people that, with morals and ethics that don't do anything, right? But it just takes that one person that says. Right. Hey, uh, I'm not in good standing here anyway. I'm, my job's in risk, right? Those are real situations. I hate to say it, but that those are true. We read stories, right, where a FedEx employee is arrested and charged with uh, theft, right? We heard about the UPS guy that went into like a, a, a cul-de-sac one-way street with like an open field and, you know, dumped some boxes out and then came back later with his regular vehicle and, and put him into that vehicle and that sort of thing. Um, those are, I'm not making that up. Those are reported uh, stories where there were, where the person was arrested and charged and, and, you know, were criminally uh, either convicted or acquitted. Those are real stories. And, um, you know, uh, it's nice to know, God forbid you're a victim of that. Heck a UPS truck. I saw it was on fire the other day, everything in the Jeez. truck. Was a was a total loss as as yeah. something happened electrically in the back and the thing went up very quickly. The driver the driver's not thinking about hey let me save John's box to right. SGC. He's he's running like I don't want to get caught in these flames like and dialing nine one one you know right. like, hey my truck's on fire. He's not right. trying to save your package as he shouldn't right. It's self preservation. Right. But those are real things that happen every day, unfortunately. And so um, right. it's nice to know that there's uh, utilities in place that can cover you. It's already going to be bad news, right? But it doesn't have to be double uh, bad news. And uh, uh, that's the service uh, you guys provide. The only one with an app. Very, very cool. And uh, like you said, you're you're getting out there to shows and being more visible. And uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. This is... Uh, really just a, a positive thing. And I think more people uh, need to be aware of. So that's, again, that's why we, we did this. So Dan, again, appreciate uh, you coming on. Look forward to meeting you uh, in person. And uh, like you said, any questions, reach out to Stadium Insurance and Dan, he'd be glad to, glad to help you out, steer you in the right direction. So thanks, Dan. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. Good talking to you today. All right. Thank you.